Hello friends, in this video we are going to implement validation for register functionality. In the previous video we had implemented a register functionality wherein we had saved the user data into the database. In this video we would basically validate user data before saving it to the database so that we would save good data into the database. We will use data annotation attributes to validate the user input. So let's go to our project. So this is our friends forever project, which we had implemented till now. And just for an update, I have hosted my project on IS. So in order to host our application on IS, you just have to right click on your project, go to properties, go to web, select local IS in this drop down and create a virtual directory. And you can browse your application on this link. So by this way, your application is hosted on IS and you don't have to run your application again and again after making code changes. You just have to build the application and refresh the page and your changes would be updated on the browser. Now before starting the implementation of validation, we'll go to our action method which we had created in a previous video where the form data is posted. So basically model binding would bind this model object and this model object is sent to security service and security service persists it to the database. Now in the validation process there are two parts. So the first part is checking the validation and the second part is showing the errors to the user. So in MVC we basically validate the user data using data annotation attributes. So the first part is again divided into two parts that is decorating the model properties with data annotation attributes and then checking for the model state. So let's go to our view model and we will decorate one of the property with data annotation attributes and we will implement complete validation flow. Once we are done with the single property then we will implement it for other properties as well. So data annotation attributes lies under system dot component model dot data annotation namespace. So I have referred this namespace in this class. And the most basic validation you can implement on a form is that is forcing a user to give value for a particular control. That means first name is required. So the most basic data annotation attribute is required. So it forces the user to provide value for this property. So the decoration of a property is done. Now comes the next part. So you would be wondering like where the validation is done, where it is checked for that value. So that is done by the model binder and that is done after the model binding. So the work of the model binder is to basically bind the data in the form post to the model properties. And once the binding is done, it runs the validation on the model object. It basically inspects the property, check for any data annotation attributes and run the validation. And the outcome of this process is model state. So model state is a dictionary in controller class. It, it is a property of a controller class, you can say. The model state has all the data which is posted by the user. Plus it also has error messages associated with each property. So if there are error messages, then the model state would be invalid. If there are no error messages, then the model state would be valid. So basically in this method, you just have to check model state dot is valid. So you just have to check is valid property of model state object. If the model state is valid, then you are good to save data to the database and return the view. If the model state is not valid, then we are going to return the model object to the view and that's it. If you go to the definition of model state, you could see it is a property of a controller, which is of type dictionary. So we are done with decoration of property with data annotation attribute plus checking for model state. And the validation would be done by model binder. Now, next part is showing the errors on the UI. Now I'm going to use an MVC razor helper for showing the errors. 
So in order to show errors, I'll create a separate div. And I'm going to use HTML dot validation summary helper. So what validation summary does is it basically inspects the model state, pick all the error messages and creates the unordered list of those error messages. So let's run this application and I'll walk through the code and we'll see how each process works. So I'll redirect myself to register page. Since first name is decorated with required and if I click on register, this model would be empty because no values is being posted, but the model state would be invalid. So if you check is valid, it is false. If you hover on model state, you would see all the keys here. You have all the values here. So keys are basically the properties. Values are the values posted by the user. So this is the value posted. So it is blank. Plus there is an error for first name property, which is saying the first name field is required. So this error would be shown on the UI by validation summary as an unordered list. So it says the first name field is required. So this is how data annotation validation works. Now what we are going to do is we are going to implement validation for other properties as well. So we'll start with first name and last name because both are exactly same in terms of what data they have. So both I want these properties to be required properties. Plus I don't want first name to be more than 20 letters. For that we have a data annotation attribute that is string length. Open a brace and it expect us to provide maximum length. Maximum length is 20. Same I will decorate last name as well. I'll build the application and go to the UI and try to enter a good value for first name but a bad value more than 20 letters for last name and click on register. So I'm expecting a single error for last name and I'm getting that. So it says the field name last name must be a string with maximum length of 20. And if I don't specify anything, it will give me an error message of required. So it says last name field is required. So just notice how the old message is gone, but now the last name field is required message has come. So this is all done by data annotation attributes plus the model state. Now we'll implement for email. So I want my email to be required plus I want to have a format for an email and that format would be of email address. Okay, so just build the application and if I go to the UI and try to post a value which is not a valid email address in email control and click on register. So this would give me an error saying this email value is not a valid email address and that is done by email addresses. So by this way, you can prevent users from entering a bogus email addresses which are not in proper format. So this will ensure that. Now we'll go to next property that is password. So we'll implement same uh, data annotation validation for password and confirm password because both are the same. So I want my password to be required. Same with confirm password. Plus I want my password to be less than six and uh, sorry, greater than six and less than 12. So for that I'll use same string length. Open the brace. It asks me for maximum length that is 20. And if you type comma, there will be named parameters and you could see the last named parameter is minimum length. So just type that and specify the minimum length six. Similarly, I'll do that for confirm password as well. Oh, I forgot to close the brace. Okay, so now I'm good. I'll build the application. Go to the UI and try to enter password which is less than six and click on register. Okay, and let me get rid of this error message and click on register again. So you will see password field is required. 
okay I have not specified anything here so I'll click on register so it says the field password must be string with minimum length of 6 and maximum length of 20 and confirm password field is required now notice that I'll give password 6 letters and confirm password more than that but still it would be accepted but I want to validate password and confirm password having same values so I want user to have or put same values in these controls so that can be validated by a data annotation attribute that is compare open the bracket it says it asks for other property so we just have to specify name of the property to which we want to compare so the property is password so I'll build the application again try to give a password which is more than six letters similarly we'll try to give password confirm password more than six letters plus more than password field so in this case you'll get an error message saying password and confirm password do not match so this is how you can basically validate password and confirm password having same value or not okay now if I give the right value here that is user 1 2 3 4 and user 1 2 3 4 now if I click on register now I'll be having no error messages my okay there is some error okay but I'm sure that the model state is valid and then the data would be saved to the database so this is how you can basically use data annotation attributes to validate the data which is provided by the user and make sure that a good data is saved to the database now I'm going to show you a few more things so now you know that we have implemented required data annotation validation on our first name property and if we don't specify the value for the first name there is a message shown at the top saying the first name field is required so this is the default message which is provided by the attribute itself you can configure this message you just open the brace check for the second overload and you would see a named parameter error message so you just specify a string error message saying name is required now when the validation fails this message would be shown instead of the default message so let me build the application post the form again now you will see a separate message for first name so you could see name is required so this is a different message being shown so you could basically configure your own error messages instead of default messages now if you don't give your own error message then default error message would be used now another thing is in your view we have used validation summary which would basically consolidate all the error messages and show it in a collection what if I want to show a single error message and that too next to this text box even that is possible you just have to use a separate a different helper and that helper is validation message for and just bind the property name that is first name now if I try to post the form again you'll see an error message next to this control so it depends on, on you how you want to implement it you want to show the error message on next to the control or consolidated error messages as an ordered list at the top it depends on you now there's one more interesting thing here so when you bind this validation message here you can always specify a validation message here as well so you can say required okay now it is interesting to see that which validation message would be considered from the view model or from the view so if I post the form again you would see a required is shown on this helper because we have configured it differently and name is required is picked from the view model okay and it is always advisable to use this 
type because if you want to change the validation message you, you can change it here and you don't have to build your application because this change in the view and you just you can deploy the view only but if you have to change a view model so it is a C sharp code and you have to build the entire application to deploy this so for that reason it is always advisable to have error message configured on your view but I would like to have it a consolidated message at the top so I am be going with the approach of having at the top okay now there's one more thing there's one more uh, reason why we have used view models because we can decorate this view model properties with data annotation attributes but we cannot decorate the model class generated by EDMX with these attributes because these classes are auto generated and if you decorate it with attributes when this EDMX builds again then your attributes would be gone so that is why we've used view model so that is another useful thing of view model now you will notice like your error messages are black in color so what you can do you can have some CSS classes applied to show it in a different color like red so we'll we are going to do that so under content I'm going to add a style sheet class style sheet file sorry and I'm going to name it as site.css okay and I have style sheet created for this okay so these are some classes which get supplied to the controls and for these classes uh, some style properties are being set now I'm going to refer this site.css on our layout page because all our views are uh, using the layout page so I'll drag and drop it under head section so this would basically refer site.css on all the views now if I refresh the page and post it again you'll see error messages in red in color and plus all your controls are also in red in color so this is how you can use these classes validation classes to have a good UI impact of validation error messages so this is all about data annotation attributes and how you can use data annotation attributes to implement validation and restrict user from entering bogus values in your controls so this is all about this video and in the next video we would basically implement UI for the register view we would basically try to improve its UI and uh, make it good looking yeah. that's it for the video and thanks for watching